behalf of our pastor, Bishop Gregory Dennis, and Pastor Thomas, we thank you for choosing to worship our Bible today. Our service will begin shortly. for the week are as follows. Calling all leaders and influencers for kingdom leadership training, unifying the whole team for kingdom impact. It will be held on Saturday, October the 10th from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. 75 seats are available on a first come first serve basis. This training will be held at our Towson campus. In-person attendees must register via the link on the screen. Training will be streamed for everyone else using our YouTube channel and kwc.online.church. Join Bishop G this, this and every Thursday on Facebook Live for Couch Conversations at 7.30 p.m. where he'll be talking about kingdom building during this COVID-19 pandemic and the role we all play. Are you an essential worshiper? Do you miss the fellowship of the saints? Join us for Kingdom's outdoor service held at our Columbia campus every second and fourth Sunday, weather permitting, at 8.30 a.m. The address is listed on the screen. Make sure you bring your lawn chair and your mask as we practice social distancing. You can now also join us on Sundays for our weekly tapings at our Towson campus. Space is limited so that we may continue to honor social distancing protocols. To register, please use the link posted on the screen or email us at info at kingdomworshipcenter.org or for instructions on how to register. Masks are required. Thank you so much to everyone who continues to give as Kingdom Worship Center endeavors to live out our mission of kingdom impact. Because of your generosity, we have been able to be a blessing to our community by hosting food drives and helping families in their time of need. If you have not already given today and would like to partner with us, please use one of the options listed on the screen and remember that God loves a cheerful giver. Kingdom Worship Center small groups are a great way for our members and friends to engage in biblical community by intentionally gathering regularly for the purpose of joining in God's mission together. If you need more information, please send an email to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org to request more information. Join Abundant Life Ministries for Kingdom Life Chat bi-weekly on Mondays at 6 p.m. Sessions will be held on Zoom and Facebook Live as our presenters touch on how faith and mental health intersect while giving strategies on how we can cope and overcome during this season. Registration is free. Register by the link on the screen to obtain the Zoom information. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? No? Grab your phone, tablet, or laptop and search Kingdom Worship Center Media and hit the subscribe button. Thank you.
The announcements for the week are as follows. Calling all leaders and influencers for kingdom leadership training. Unifying the whole team for kingdom impact. It will be held on Saturday, October the 10th from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. 75 seats are available on a first come first serve basis. This training will be held at our Towson campus. In-person attendees must register via the link on the screen. Training will be streamed for everyone else using our YouTube channel and kwc.online.church. Join Bishop G this, this and every Thursday on Facebook Live for Couch Conversations at 7.30 p.m. where he'll be talking about kingdom building during this COVID-19 pandemic and the role we all play. Are you an essential worshiper? Do you miss the fellowship of the saints? Join us for Kingdom's outdoor service held at our Columbia campus every second and fourth Sundays, weather permitting, at 8.30 a.m. The address is listed on the screen. Make sure you bring your lawn chair and your mask as we practice social distancing. You can now also join us on Sundays for our weekly tapings at our Towson campus. Space is limited so that we may continue to honor social distancing protocols. To register, please use the link posted on the screen or email us at info at kingdomworshipcenter.org or for instructions on how to register. Masks are required. Thank you so much to everyone who continues to give as Kingdom Worship Center endeavors to live out our mission of kingdom impact. Because of your generosity, we have been able to be a blessing to our community by hosting food drives and helping families in their time of need. If you have not already given today and would like to partner with us, please use one of the options listed on the screen and remember that God loves a cheerful giver. Kingdom Worship Center's small groups are a great way for our members and friends to engage in biblical community by intentionally gathering regularly for the purpose of joining in God's mission together. If you need more information, please send an email to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org to request more information. Join Abundant Life Ministries for Kingdom Life Chat bi-weekly on Mondays at 6 p.m. Sessions will be held on Zoom and Facebook Live as our presenters touch on how faith and mental health intersect while giving strategies on how we can cope and overcome during this season. Registration is free. Register by the link on the screen to obtain the Zoom information. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? No? Grab your phone, tablet, or laptop and search Kingdom Worship Center Media and hit the subscribe button. Thank you. everyone. 
we want to take this opportunity to welcome you to Kingdom Worship Center. I am Elder Portia Wheatley, and this is my co-host. Elder Dwayne Dent. On behalf of our senior pastors, Bishop Gregory Dennis and Lady Tanya Dennis, we want to once again welcome you to Kingdom Worship Center, where we just love to worship here, and we are so happy that you have decided to worship with us. Let me know how your week was, Dwayne. I had a phenomenal week. You know, things have been shifting and moving around, but God has been faithful. Oh, my and God. And he's been keeping me, keeping my family safe, even through this pandemic time. And so I'm just so thankful to know him and to I know him so as glad. a keeper and a protector. How was your week this week? My week was awesome. Praise God. It's amazing how even in the midst of this pandemic, God has been blessing over and over Amen. and over again. And we're just so grateful to God. We're glad that you had a great week. Amen. We're glad that you out there had a great week. Yeah. And we're just coming today to give God some great worship because Amen. he's a great God. Amen. Are you and, happy to be in the house? Whoop, I'm ready. Happy I'm to be so back ready. In the house. Amen. Yes, Amen. yes. And what are we going to do while we're here? Oh, we're going to praise him. We're going to lift up holy hands and we're going to rejoice and give God glory because forward. of his faithfulness. Yes, Lord. Amen. I'm so looking forward to it. And we ask that you come and join us wherever you are. You can praise, worship, clap, dance, Amen. all of that. Amen. All of that. Let's go into the house of God where we're uh, taking this opportunity to give him all the praise uh, and worship that he's worthy of. Amen. But let's go in with the praise and worship team and see what they have for us. And whatsoever we do, Lord God, whatever we put our hands to, it will prosper in Jesus' name. Lord God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We came to worship you on today. We came to love on you on today, God. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day that you have made. Hallelujah. We choose to rejoice. No matter what's going on, no matter how it's been all week, we choose to rejoice on today day hallelujah and give you glory now father we ask in the name of jesus that you will saturate the atmosphere in jesus name we ask that you would throw your weight around in the mighty name of jesus we ask you lord god to touch everybody coming through the door in jesus name and we command lord god that people will lift up their heads oh ye gates be ye lifted up the everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is the king of glory the Lord strong and mighty. Who is he? He's the Lord mighty in battle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We honor you on this day. We honor you, God. Hallelujah. You are awesome in everything that you do. You're awesome, God. Hallelujah. You're our portion forever. Lord God, we ask that you will watch over, Lord God, each and every person. Lord God, meet every need, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We come against, Lord God, anything that will cause our minds to be distracted on today. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. We bind every sickness, Lord God, because the Bible says that you took 39 stripes for our sickness, for every illness, for every infirmity. And Lord God, we declare right now that even COVID is under arrest. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. So we are free to worship. We are free to bless your name. Hallelujah. We're free to love on you and give you glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless our bishop. In the name of Jesus, watch over him on today. Watch over him, First Lady Tanya. In the name of Jesus, put your heads of protection around them. In Jesus' name, Lord God. Everything, Lord God, that you have given our bishop to speak on today, we declare, Lord God, as you cover him, as you watch over him, Lord God, as the word of God will flow out of his belly. In the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord God, to strengthen him. We, Lord God, declare right now that you are covering him on every side. In the name of Jesus. And nothing the enemy can do, nothing the enemy can do. No weapon formed against him shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, everything he touches, Lord God, will excel in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The vision, Lord God, that you have given him, Lord God, is coming to pass every day, every day, every moment, every moment, Lord God. Guard his ear gate in the name of Jesus. Watch over his eye gate in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Put your head over him. Be his niece, God. Hallelujah. 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 Watch over his home. Watch over his babies in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. And we love on you. And we bless you, God. And we exalt your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because your compassion, it fails not. God is new every single morning. Hallelujah. Woo, God. Every morning, new mercies are seen. Lord, we thank you. We 
bless your name. Without you, God, we couldn't do it. Without you, God, we can't stand here. Without you, God, hallelujah. Lord God, the Bible says that the, the steps of a righteous man, they're ordered by you. Hallelujah, God. Our steps are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. Be exalted in this place on today. Lord God, open up the gate. Open up the space, Lord God, that we can send up a sweet smile and savor unto you, oh God. Hallelujah. We bless you. We won't forget to honor everything, Lord God, that you are doing. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Hallelujah. We ask you, Lord God, to watch over each and every person. We ask you, Lord God, even under the sound of my voice, Lord, that if there's sickness in the house, we command you to be healed in Jesus' name. You don't have to wait for this one. I command it. I send it forth in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Sickness and disease are far from you. Hallelujah. We stand on the word of God that says, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Don't you worry about anything. God is with you. Don't you worry. Don't you fret, hallelujah, God, oh, hallelujah, he will honor his word, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, be glorified, be glorified, Father, be glorified in us, be glorified in everything that we say, in everything that we do, hallelujah, we speak life on today, we speak life on today, live, people of God, hallelujah, live, people of God, hallelujah, for this we give you glory and for this we bless you and for this we magnify your holy name your name is Adonai your name is Jehovah your name is Mechadish your name hallelujah is to be praised hallelujah God and we thank you and we bless your name Jesus hallelujah 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 that's the highest praise hallelujah hallelujah God God based out of where our experience is. So I just need you to tap into some of your experiences that you've had with God, where he's brought you from, things he's healed you from, things he's rescued you from. Some of you know him to be a healer. Some of you know him to be a provider and sustainer. Some of you know him to be your strength. Come on, he's turned some things around for you. For all of us, he's been redemption and grace and forgiveness and mercy. Hallelujah. <laughs> For all of us, he's been forgiveness and grace and mercy and kindness. We would not be standing here today. Hallelujah. Just tap into it. Jesus, morning by morning, I've seen new mercy. Hallelujah. Great has been your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Even save me from myself some days. If you hadn't kept me in my right mind. Continue to worship him. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you. There's nothing like 
presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. Yeah. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. Nothing like your presence, Lord. All we want to do is worship you. Nothing like. Come on, sing it. Sing it to Him. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want to do. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want to do. Nothing like your presence, Lord. All I that's all we want to do that's why we exist that's what you created us to do yeah i want to sing that one more time let's do that there's nothing like come on sing church there's nothing your presence lord all i want to do is to worship you your presence lord all i want to do there's nothing like your presence, Lord, all I want to do. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship. That's why we're here. Come on, lift your hands, lift your voice, lift your hearts. That's all we want to do. Hey. Yes, that's all we want to do is worship you. With everything we are everything that's within us with our very souls lord hey come on sing you are god you are god hey you are god and we worship and we worship yeah. you, you are god, are god. And, we and we worship you jesus hey you are god Oh, God. And we worship you, say. And we worship 
that for the rest of my life that nothing will ever take his place. No one will ever take his place. That throne belongs to him. That throne belongs to him. Yes, I will bless the Lord. Yes, I will bless the Lord. right here Yes, I hope. Yes, 
your story is. I don't know what he's brought you from, but I know he's done great things. Yes, I know he was a great thing. I know he's done great things. How blessed, blessed is all. We're going to sing it this last time.
certainly empathize with our need to praise him because he's been good to us and some of our praises have not been as free as they are right now hallelujah we didn't want to allow anybody to have calls to lock us up thinking we were insane but now we're in a good place to praise him because he's been just that good he's been just that kind to us and today we bless the name of the Lord the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are saved. Hallelujah. Welcome to morning service at Kingdom Worship Center, 6419 York Road. Here in Towson, Maryland. We're so glad you're visiting with us. Rather be in person or online via Wi-Fi. Our virtual settings on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Thank you for coming and joining us today. Our testimonies of the Lord has been good to us. <laughs> She's saying we've been more than we ever expected. Lord, you've been more than I ever expected. <laughs> That's the kind of God you are. We bless your name. Share my Bible soon. Father, we thank you for blessing us and giving us capability of blessing you. It's not hard to praise you, Lord, when you've been so kind to us as you've been. And today, we, because of your loving kindness, that we have not been consumed. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, we found brand new mercies. Everything we need in your hand continues to provide. And today we bless your holy name. Thank you for this day that you've made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Our soul commands us to praise you and bless your name. Speak to us, we pray, over the next few minutes through your word. Make us hearers of your word. Make us doers of your word. And Lord, we pray that you would make us your word. Let us become living epistles being read of men. Preventure someone may read a chapter or verse of our lives and be convinced to give you their life. What a joy it is when we give you our life. Thank you for leadership today. Thank you for Bishop Greg and Pastor Tanya, the senior pastors of this kingdom movement thank you for them and the leaders the elders the overseers the deacons the ministers every team player every member who's in covenant from the heart who walks by their side even for the adversarial ones because they keep us praying they keep us on our toes we give you glory today speak to us and we'll give you glory for the same in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.
wherever you are, one more time, just put those hands together, open your mouth, and give God a praise offering for his loving kindness and his tender mercies. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to also ask you to do me another favor today, whether you're watching us or you're in present here on the campus. Let's thank God for the seventh completing of seven years of leadership here. Today is the seventh anniversary of Bishop Gregory Dennis and Pastor Tanya. Let's thank God for their seven years of leadership. We honor you, sir. We honor you. We honor you, Pastor Tanya. We honor you. Come on, one more time. Give it to them a little more. Just raise it just a little bit. Come on, if you're home, wherever you are, give them some thumbs up. Give them some smiles. Give them some hearts. Wherever you are, Hallelujah. They've been great leaders. And we're so grateful. We're so grateful. They're entering into their eighth year now. And you all know eight is a number of new beginnings, new beginnings. And we, we speak God's blessings upon this next dimension of their servitude to the kingdom of God. May God enrich them powerfully. May God change the dimensions of their ministry. And I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about spiritually now. May God enlarge their territory like only he can do. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so pleased with them. And this band and this praise team today has been bonkers. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Amen. I appreciate you guys so very much. May the Lord continue to bless and anoint you in Jesus' name. I had short notice of being here today. <laughs> Very short notice. <laughs> uh, but a man my age should always have something he can preach about. <laughs> I've been doing this now for, what, I've been 57 years since I'm 15 uh, I started preaching when I was 19. Started when I preaching legitimately when I was 19. Y'all know what legitimately means. <laughs> uh, but here I am, and I'm glad to be here on this day that we celebrate our leader's anniversary. I think it would be good that they he did not have to preach today during his anniversary. And uh, just to give you a heads up uh, so that uh, you can be getting ready, don't forget to Make sure you give your special offerings today for anniversary. Amen. Whether you're home or you're in the sanctuary, make sure you don't forget to give your special anniversary offerings to tell our pastors how much we love and appreciate them and their service unto the Lord. Is that all right? I, I think it is. I think it is. This week, we lost one of the justices of the Supreme Court Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed a long time Supreme Court justice who was a legal and cultural icon. She died on the first day of Rosh Hashanah. What amazing that is. She dies on the first day of Rosh Hashanah. And it just so happens, this doesn't make a lot of difference, but let's just note it, that she's a Jew. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. The same day because the evening and the morning are the day in the Hebraic calendar. Not the morning and the evening, but the evening and the morning. So the day begins at 6 p.m. until 5.59 the next day. That's one day. So it just so happens that a longtime friend, colleague, brother of mine, uh, out of Cleveland, Ohio, Archbishop J. Delano Ellis died on the same day, if you look at the Hebraic day. Gregorian day, it's a little different. Uh, he's a Jew because he was grafted in. She's a Jew because she was born into it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, he's a friend of mine. He was, I was part of his executive board for a number of years, a long time, managed the finances, was the fiscal officer 
of the Joint College of African American Pentecostal Bishops. Uh, and uh, it was a great pleasure to work with him and work for him as a member of his staff all those years. Amen. His transitioning reminds us that there are some vacancies that are not meant to be filled. <laughs> now, the president has already threatened us that he is going to give his nomination for the for the fully filling of uh, Ginsburg position immediately with an effort to make sure that person is gets through the Senate uh, and Congress before election time. Hallelujah. <laughs> my, 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 my. And we're gonna, not going to uh, politicize that today. And there's a whole another message in that. They held back the nominee that uh, was available to be put in office when Obama was going out of office. They held it back, but now they want to push this one forward. <laughs> oh, politics is a crazy thing. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. But people like Bishop Ellis, Archbishop Delano, J. Delano Ellis, they're hard to replace, and I'm grateful that the Lord does not have to replace us when he takes us because God always have an assignment for you individually. My God Almighty, you're, uh, uh, nobody else's assignment is being held up waiting for you to go. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Nobody else's assignment is being held up waiting for you to go. No, you're free. You're free to be who God says you are right now. Hallelujah. And that's a good thing. And that's a good thing. And then coincidentally, or perhaps even providentially, this week, there was a signing of the Abraham Accord. Did you follow that this week? The signing of the Abraham Accord between Israel and the United Arab Emirates and uh, uh, Bahrain. There was a signing of that accord, which brings us to another level of peace, prosperity, economic advancement in the Middle East. Woo! <laughs> Sons of Abraham are starting to agree with each other. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh -huh. All were uh, sons of Abraham. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Different biological fathers, but their granddad is the same person. Lord, have mercy. So the, the, it's all part of the fulfillment of God's word is happening. But when they say peace and safety, beware. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> I'm just talking Bible now for those of you who love the Bible. That's when we can look for something traumatic to happen in the earth when they say peace and safety. And that's about where they are now because even Israel is not fighting anymore the uh, absolute possession of the Golan Heights. That we're, we're agreeing that some things must be left alone. Hallelujah. But God's in charge. How many know that God's in charge? The beginning of Tishrai, the beginning of Tishrai, the first month of the Hebraic year started on the 18th or Friday, this last Friday, and will continue through today, the end of the day, or if you're looking at the Gregorian calendar through tomorrow, hallelujah. But this new year, 5781, so I'm not Bishop G, so I'm not going to try to give you an expository message today. I'm not an expository preacher per se. I'm more a topical preacher than I am expository. Hallelujah. Uh, but when I look at this, this all gives us signs of what the Lord is doing. So I want to share some of that with you this morning. I just want to put that in your ear of what I see the Lord's doing as we turn and move into the year of 5781. A left pay, a left pay, a left A L E P H A L E P H pay P E Y left pay. That's number for eighty one. The symbol, all of Hebraic numbers and letters have symbols. There's a correlation between uh, Hebraic numerology and alphabet, and all of those have symbols attached to them. <laughs> Hallelujah. And a left, the symbol of the left, which is one, is the symbol of the ox. The symbol of the ox. Pay. The symbol of pay is the open mouth. Lord have mercy. And as it is written in the Hebrew standard, it would be a left pay, not pay a left, but a left pay, which says the ox is in the mouth. The ox is in the mouth. 
Lord, have mercy. <laughs> stay with me. Stay with me. So if you're trying to understand what's going on, this is going to be a year of strong silence in the mouth. Strong silence in the mouth. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Are you still here? Hallelujah. I pray that you have not gone to another uh, 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 virtual program on your iPhone, on your television, or wherever you are. Stay with me for a moment. I believe you will be enlightened by what the Lord has to say. To understand this saying, we look no further than the lamb on the cross. <laughs> for in Acts 8 and 32, where Philip interrupts the reading of the Ethiopian eunuch, he's reading the place of scripture which he reads was this. I'm reading verse 32, 8 and 32 of Acts. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, as a lamb dumb before his shearer. So he opened not his mouth. <laughs> oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you, did you get that? That's in Acts 8 and 32. Read it if you get a chance. What, what sound is heard? What sound is heard more loudly? In all the acts of scriptures than when the lamb was slain on the cross. Hallelujah. It was, it was in our weakness that the lamb became strong like an ox. <laughs> A left pain. Hallelujah. My God. The silence of the cross is the sound of heaven. I want to say that again. The silence of the cross is the sound of heaven. Heard around the world. The Bible says even Abel's blood cried out and God heard him. <laughs> Abel's blood cried out and God heard him. I, I'm just giving you a little scripture. Uh, something to eat on and feast on uh, and, and deliberate about during lunchtime today. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, it, it, if, you, if you really want me to bring it into contemporary understanding, listen to this and don't, get, don't turn your channels. Don't, don't flip off your, your iPhone, your iPad. Stay with me for a moment. If you understand the total concept of what's going on here, you have to agree that even with God, black lives matter. Ooh, shababai. Stay right with me here. Hallelujah. So perhaps the blood of the 164 black people who have been killed by police for the first eight months of this year matter to God. Maybe God has heard them. <laughs> Maybe God has heard us. Are y'all still here? Don't, hallelujah. My God Almighty. Particularly if you read verse 33. Of, of, of Acts uh, uh, chapter 8, verse 33. I just read verse 32, and that's all I had written down, but I don't mind turning real quick to verse 33 because there's a continuation of that same thought that we're looking at now. Uh, uh, that verse, now I'm trying to find it as I'm talking to you. Uh, uh, Acts 8 and 32, uh, and I want to find Acts 8 and 33. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's in my Bible. Here we go, here we go, and I'm going to read it from the Amplified. Uh, verse 33 says, and his judge, in his humiliation, I'm sorry, and his humiliation, in his humiliation, he was taken away by distressing and oppressive judgment and justice, was denied him, judgment and justice were denied him, caused to cease. I'm reading Amplified. Who can describe or relate in full the wickedness of his contemporaries or his generation? For his life is taken from the earth and a bloody death inflicted upon him. <laughs> That's just some context if you want to understand why I just inserted there Black Lives Matter. Now, justice is a priority with God. Come on, talk to me. Fairness is the priority with God. Equality is a priority with God. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just thought I want to put that in there so that we don't forget it. Hallelujah. My God Almighty, out of one blood, he made all nations. Hallelujah. Out of one blood, God made all nations. So we got to understand who we are. 
and our equality. What sound is heard loudly, loudly, hallelujah, upon the cross, hallelujah. More than word in our mouth, the profound silence of the blood speaks loudly. The profound silence of the blood is heard by all those who can hear it. With this in mind, it is better to be the strong silent. What did I just say? Better to be the strong silent type this year than to be the loud, weak-minded who might be mistaken as an egotistical bully. Those who are wise are getting the inferences. Hallelujah. We must prepare our mouths to speak the silence of the Lamb. Be like the saints who knew when to hold their tongue and to let their actions speak louder than words. Hallelujah. But do not confuse silence with inactivity. Man, I feel God in here. <laughs> Just remind your neighbor wherever you are today, don't, don't confuse silence with, inact with inactivity. Hallelujah. Neither should silence be confused with saying nothing. Because your silence don't mean you're not saying something. I feel God in here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo -wee. Every brother, every man of God in here today, every child of God, who, brother who's married, you know your wife doesn't have to say a word and yet give you a book full. Hallelujah. That's a good place to shout, brothers. I know I got some witnesses out there. Now, if your wife's sitting next to you, don't say a word. Don't say nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Silence has a way of communicating. It does. The whole world is saved through the silence of one who on the cross did not say a mumbling word. And yet his activity saved the whole world. Good God Almighty. So don't confuse my silence with the fact that I'm not doing anything. Woo, Shabaya. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, what you got to understand uh, about action, and action is also an internal process. It's an internal working. <laughs> Hallelujah. My internal has power over my external. But that, that, you'll catch that later on. <laughs> Hallelujah. I need to be governed by my internal voice before I move, before I say something, before I do something. More than by the external, come on, uh, things that are urging, irking me and bothering me. I hope you're hearing me. I must be controlled by the internal over the external. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God Almighty. Well, I've been asked to preach today. Uh, and so let me go into my word. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I hope y'all don't mind. I'm not going to be long. I, 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 at least it's not what I call long. Praise the name of the Lord. But I'm just going to give you a couple of reminders. I needed to say those things to you because we are byproducts of the root that we've been grafted into. Every Gentile has been, who believes in Jesus has been grafted into the vine. We're part of a Hebraic history, a Hebraic root. And it affects us whether we believe it or not. Hallelujah. My God. And I just wanted just to start there with you today. There's a continuation of the thought today. From the word of the Lord as I just, just bring you uh, 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 some good news from God's word. Acts 14 and 27. I'm going to read three scriptures real quick. And I'm going to hit them real fast. And then get off uh, and move on for the other part of our services. Acts 14 and 27. Acts chapter 14 verse 27. And when they were come and had gathered the church together. When the quarantine had released them and they were able to get back to church. <laughs> you see it there? They rehearsed all that God had done with them. What 
has happened to us since we last came together. Since we've been quarantined, share with me some things that's been going on with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh -huh. And how he opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles and how he opened the door of the faith unto the Gentiles or I'm going to use my own in words for his unto another people. How God has the propensity of visiting with Somebody other than you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I'm grateful that God has others who are not of this fold. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 10. And they too must come in. They must be let in. They must be allowed to attend. Hallelujah. Correlating text, 1 Corinthians 16 and 9 and I, I promise I'm going to go through this quickly because uh, the COVID quarantine has taught us that by this time on Sunday now, after our broadcast has gone off, we are about ready to get lunch and a nap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, 16 and 9, 1 Corinthians 16 and 9, you know the text quite well. It says, for a great door, somebody say a great door. And effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. A great door has opened, but there's trouble behind the door. Lord have mercy. A great door has opened, but it's not an easy door to keep open. A great door has opened, but it's not easy, nor is it simple to go through. Because there are things that are combating me, even though I'm enticed to go through the door. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. My God, I, I feel like preaching. And, and the last text, the last text, and I won't bother you with much reading, I'm, even though I may quote some things uh, uh, from uh, Revelations chapter 4, verse 1. Revelations chapter 4, verse 1. And the word of the Lord reads there. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. My God. Hallelujah. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet taking, uh, talking to me, I'm sorry, talking to me, which said, come up hither, and I will show thee Things which must come or which must be hereafter. A trumpet. If you study the Hebraic calendar, you know right now we're in the midst of the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets taken from Leviticus chapter 23. That whole text is a good one to read. What I like about the Feast of Trumpets, one of the things it says in verse 25 is that the Lord shall have out of that uh, in a sacrifice Offering that's made by fire. Good God Almighty. Out of, the, out of the fire, the Lord will be blessed with what comes and is offered unto him. That's, that's another sermon for another day. I want to preach today. In all three of these scriptures, there is there's a single word that appears over and over. And that's the word door. I want to talk to you today about doors are about to be opened. Come on, just testify to your neighbor, say doors are about to be open. I want to raise the conjecture or the interrogatory. What are you going to do when the door is open? What happens when the door opens? What happens when the door is open? I, I got a long list of definitions, but I'm not going to go through them because you know what a door is. I, I could probably share some definitions with you that would surprise you, but I won't bother that just for keeping a sermon short. For just the simplicity of... Or the metaphorical door today, let's call doors opportunities. Let's call doors opportunities. I, I, and you, you know what a door is. You left home through one. You entered your car through one. You came to church through one. Wherever you are today, you got there via a door. So it's an entranceway. It's an entranceway. And I want to talk about it from that. COVID-19 closed many doors, both literally and figuratively. COVID-19 closed many doors, doors of entertainment, doors of business and education, doors of government, arts, 
hallelujah, doors of family and religion were closed as a consequence of an enemy that you could not see. He, hallelujah. Your greatest warfare is invisible. Your greatest warfare is not the person that you sleep with, ride with, eat with. Come on, talk to me in here. Your greatest warfare is not the one that you have conversation one with on the phone. Your greatest warfare is invisible. Your greatest warfare is a spiritual enemy. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. When we went into this, uh, this, this quarantine, there was a change of platforms, formats, structures. Hallelujah. Patterns were changed. Plans were changed. We experienced new norms. Hallelujah. I have been introduced to uh, virtual uh, conferencing now. And prior to March, I didn't had never done virtual conferences other than FaceTime. Are y'all still here? But now we have learned new things because of the situation at hand. Some were affected differently than others. Not all of us were affected the same way. Hallelujah. Some of us had more restrictions than others because of what we call pre-existing conditions. Some were more free to go about than others because many were called essentials, frontliners, first responders. They were considered necessary. What bothered me about this, and I'm going to get through this real quick here, is that that never nobody ever categorized pastors as essential. When they shut down everything else, they shut down churches with it. It shows me how our nation prioritize or seize church. <laughs> if they only understood, if they only understood the power that comes through or into the world as believers come together and are in touch and agree on one thing, they will let pastors keep on coming. Prayer warriors keep on coming. Intercessors keep on coming. Come on, talk to me in here. Hallelujah. Why, why, why? Because there's such power that happens when we come together that affects the whole world. Woo. Give me a group of prayer warriors. We can turn the city around. Come on, talk to me. Things can change in the nation when people pray. That's why we read 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then would I hear from heaven. I forgive their sin and I heal their land. Why? Because they're my people who are praying. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. As I, as I keep moving forward, as long as the pandemic was spreading out of control with no antidote, no vaccine, uh, and, and we cannot seem to get a hold of it, mitigation was the, the wisest possible solution as in an effort to at least reduce the number of incidents. Thus, we were uh, uh, instructed to wash our hands. We were instructed to wear masks. We were instructed for, to do social distancing. Lord, <laughs> stay at home unless it was absolutely necessary to go. <laughs> and all these things we did because we were fearful of the unseen. Fearful of that which we did not know or understand. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not going to bother you today long. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I, I'm concerned about how we have allowed fear to be more prominently expressed, even among believers during this season. Come on, talk to me. Then we did faith in God. And I know we, we, we prioritized it by, by saying, let's render unto Caesar that which is Caesar, so we're under the law, so let's obey the law. My God Almighty. But that should not have been a consolation prize. We should have done that with battling. We should have done that, come on, talk to me, with struggle. We should have done that not feeling great about it. Come on, talk to me. We should have done that with some resistance. Good God Almighty. John MacArthur should not have been the only one. Come on, come on, John MacArthur in California kept his church open the entire time. He should not perhaps be the only one. And I'm not bothering anybody who chose to follow instructions. That's not where I am. you got to hear my heart here. Hallelujah. But something is wrong when we become content. Hallelujah. To allow fear to control us when the enemy is unseen and we've been taught to how to handle unseen things. Ooh. Hallelujah. 
My God Almighty, we got power over spiritual wickedness in high places. Lord have mercy. <laughs> but our our ace, our uh, card has been the fact that we're obeying those who have rule over us. And that gave us some contentment. I'm not bothering you today. <laughs> don't don't y'all get upset with me. The problem is the enemy uses these kinds of situations to perplex those who belong to the Lord and even to those who don't. Because during the quarantine, during the social distancing, social distancing has also become physical distancing and physical alienation, physical isolation. Talk to me in here. And now, now mental health is being tested and tried more than any time recently. Talk to me here. Come on. Stress levels are high. My God. Depression. Come on. Is uncontrollable. Not, not just become among unbelievers either. Those who are believers are, are facing the same kind of dilemma. Loneliness. Anxiety. Fear. Fear. Come on. I, I, am I preaching right here? here? Hallelujah. High, high blood pressure. Off the chart. Racing hearts. Come on. There are some psychosomatic effects. We're seeing things and hearing things and we're wondering what is that. I need God to help me in here today. Hallelujah. And we've got to contend like never before for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. We've got to hold on to God and not allow the situations to perplex us. Almost finished. I'm almost finished. Hallelujah. Doors are liminal expressions. Doors are liminal expressions. Why? Because doors have a subliminal construct called a threshold. It's called a threshold. The word liminal means threshold. You know, some of you heard me preach about that before, but I'm going to approach it just a little bit differently now because we got to understand this liminal space and time that we've been in since March has been transitional space. Hit them quickly. Can't go into great detail. They've been transactional space. Uh huh. And it's, there has been transformative results. And I'm going to go through that again real quick. Transitional place. We've been in a transitional place. Transactional situations and trans. Formational results, transitional place, transactional situations, and transformational results because of the doors that now have been uh, part of our expression. Think for a moment with the threshold. Paul says, when they let me loose, I went back, and because the door was now open, I had an, an, uh, an opportunity to lead many others to the faith. That was because now that the door of faith was open, he had the opportunity to reach those who could not be reached. That's what we read today over in the book of Acts. Now, when we move forward in the book of 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 16, he says, an effectual, a door and an effectual was open unto me. And others others uh, 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 have that reading as an effectual door was open unto me, which is good. Uh, and, but I want to talk about that from the fact that it was a, uh, the threshold is a transitional place. It lets us free from where we are and opens unto us to where we need to be. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. So if I don't express the, the threshold, if I don't understand it correctly, I'll stay on the wrong side of it. Not knowing that the threshold immediately communicates to me opportunity. A threshold, come on, talk to me, immediately talks to me in the language of opportunity. It says to me, I've got a chance to leave from where I am and to move into a place where God desires me to be. And that's what this COVID-19 has done. That's why I call it a transitional place, but also a transactional, a transactional situation. Hallelujah. Transactional simply means that there has been some conversation between me and another, and we have agreed, if then, 
if this, then this, then that. If this, then that. It's been hypothetical. <laughs> it's transactional because if he opens the door, then I am expected to go through it. That's transactional. Lord have mercy. He would not open the door and then not expect me to go through it. <laughs> and I can't stay there. Transitional transaction. What was the third one? Transformative. Hallelujah. And when I go through the door that the Lord has transitionally opened for me, come on, because I have responded to the transactions of God, immediately I experience transformation. <laughs> My life is changed forever. Good God Almighty. The doors that the Lord uh, is opening for us are doors that will change your life forever. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, he's changing my life forever. Ooh, hallelujah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm closing by force. I'm closing because I, I sense the need to do it. Lord, I got so much more I could share with you. Uh, what I want you to understand today is when doors open, look for thresholds move in the direction of the threshold lord have mercy and here's here's what that does it reinforces to you that there is an opening good god almighty why is that preacher it's because thresholds are not seen unless doors are open you don't see thresholds when doors are closed Come on, talk to me. Go Shabakaya. Hallelujah. Thresholds are only seen when doors are open. My God. So in this season, the Holy Spirit is raising our level of consciousness. And it says, don't just look to see if the door is open. Because sometimes a bird will tell you that will fool you. You ever had a seen a bird fly into a window or door thinking that it was open? Lord have mercy and knock their crazy selves out. <laughs> That's the sign of believers. Sometimes try to go through spaces they think are open that the Lord did not open. But if you want to verify that there is an opening, Lord have mercy, look for the threshold. Look for the place of transition. Look for the place of transformation. Look for the place of transaction. That is the place that the Lord has set before you Ooh. hallelujah I close I close and I wish I could preach like Bishop G hallelujah <laughs> thresholds <laughs> become transitional strips mm, yeah see we got to see beyond our enclosed dimension I I, I and, 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 and Terry or Carolyn, as Bishop G said, you can start to calm me down a little bit now. <laughs> we can see beyond our closed dimension and see opportunities beyond where I've been. Where I've been. Listen to me closely. If you haven't listened for the first 35, 40 minutes here, listen for the last three, 35 minutes. Listen to this. Because what God is about to reveal to you in this season where he's had your attention, where you have been contemplating and, 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 and recalling and, and focusing inwardly more than outwardly, hallelujah, is an opportunity that does not come every day. Oh, my shaboko shabaye. Hallelujah. It does not come every day of the week. It's, it's, it's an opportunity that's rare. Somebody just prophesied the Lord is about to present to you a rare opportunity. It's a rare opportunity. It's a place that's not the norm. It's an exception to the rule. Hallelujah. It's not something that you will always encounter. But yet the Lord says, I'm setting before you this open door. I'm giving you an encounter that is a consequence of the place where I've allowed you to be. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. <laughs> doors are opening. Doors are opening. Some doors, and I want you to think of this when you say opening, because some doors are opening for the first time, while other doors are reopening. He's the God of the second chance. I feel like preaching. 
third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Come on, y'all still here? Infinity. Come on. He's the God of many chances. And some of these doors are doors that he's opened before. And you did not go through it. Come on, you neglected it. You did not, were not aware that this was the door the Lord was opening. And the Lord said, I'm going to reopen it. I'm going to open it again. I'm going to give you another opportunity. I'm going to give you another chance. Woo, Shabokaya. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I could relate that to the stages we're in. Stage one, only a handful can come back. Stage two, 50%. Stage three, 75. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when God is controlling the threshold, and I'm about to close, you know that your opportunity is not something that can be humanly regulated. It's a God thing. Somebody says it's a God thing. And here's where I get that from the last text we read. Over in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Listen to me carefully. Every believer, this is the word for you today. After this, after this COVID-19, after the quarantines, after the regulations, I know that's not what John was talking about. He was talking about after seeing what the Lord has shown him. But I want you to hear it from a context that you can relate to. After this, I looked. And behold, a door was opened in heaven. <laughs> after I'd gone through everything I'd been going through, I looked. Good God Almighty. Don't let your situation cause you to close your eyes. Don't let your situation cause you to become aloof. Are y'all still here? My shoka. Don't let your situation allow you to become out of touch. My God. John could only see it because he looked. He looked. My God Almighty. And he beheld or he saw. Ooh. God's got something he wants to show you. <laughs> Ooh. And it requires that you look so that you can behold it. He said, what did I see, John? What do you see, John? A door was open, not in the earth, but where? In heaven. A door was open in heaven. A door is being opened in heaven. Woo. And whatever God shows us in heaven is an inference or an indication of what we should be experiencing in the earth. Come on. On earth as in heaven. On earth as in heaven. Hallelujah. So please in this season, as I close, as I close, understand what he's saying here. And the voice, and the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me. A trumpet having a conversation. The feast of trumpets, the shofar sounds 100 times. The shofar is, is made to sound 100 times during the Feast of Trumpets. And every sound, 35 of those sounds are distinct. But each of them have a language. <laughs> and, and what John says here, he's familiar with that context. He says, the trumpet was talking to me. It has a language. I understood by the sounds what God was saying. I feel God in here. Hallelujah. There's a language of the Spirit that you and I must not forget just because we've been shut in, just because we've been quarantined, because we have not been able to come together. There's a language of the Spirit where now your internal ears must have been made even better or greater in hearing a frequency from another dimension. Hallelujah. Why is that? Because John says he invited me up to come up hither. And I will show thee which must be hereafter. Here's the word of the Lord I'm closing with. After you've heard everything else I've said, I pray. The Lord says, you are about to become interdimensionalist. And interdimensionalist is somebody who experiences God in more than one dimension. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I, I felt that way this morning when I, 
I heard the praise team worshiping. I heard the music playing. The saints rejoicing. <laughs> I said, there, there, there's a context that many believers now are going to exit the gravitational pull of spiritual warfare. I'm going to say it again. Exit the gravitational pull of spiritual warfare when they come together. And if not but for an hour, they're going to ascend beyond that which has a history of pulling them down and pulling them back. Come on, talk to me. Hallelujah. And defeating them. If I can just make it into a place of worship. Come on, talk to me in here. Koshabaikaya. Hallelujah. The Lord will cause me to abound beyond the place of spiritual warfare. And I enter into a heavenly place within Christ Jesus where I can give him glory. I did not come near doing justice to this sermon. And I apologize to my four pieces of paper here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I got a lot of detail here, but time won't allow it. But I think you got the essence of it. Hallelujah. God has brought us into this time place, the liminal space and time, threshold space and time. We cannot miss the transition. We cannot miss the transaction. We cannot miss the transformation. That's where we are. That's what God wants to do for us. Woe unto those who've been shut in since March. And you're just where you've been or in a lower place because you have not known how to capitalize off of this liminal time with God. Lord have mercy. The enemy have made you anxious. Come on talk to me. He's made you fearful. He's called you to become perplexed. He's called you to become depressed. That's the work of the devil. Come on y'all talk to me in here. That's the work of that. That's not the Lord's doing. That's not the Lord's doing. Hallelujah. We're, we're not of this world. We don't, we don't base where we are based upon things we see or things that empirically we discern. Are y'all still here? No, no, no. Our faith is in God. Hallelujah. And there is an awesome door that is opening to the believer today. What are you going to do when that door opens? I, I, I close. I close. I was downstairs in my office last night, and I heard the Lord says, even when the door is open, be sensitive to the fact that every door that is open is not for you. You may see doors open that are not for you. Whew. I wish I had some help in here. If, every now and then, you may have to remind somebody else that that's your door. That's not my door. That's your door. Lord, have mercy. I, I, got, I got to remain where I am until my door opens. I can't just follow you through a door that's not my door. Come on. Just because you're leaving, I can't leave. That ain't my door. That's your door. If you feel led to leave because that's your door, then go by. Goodbye. But my door says I got to stay here until my spirit agrees that this is the door the Lord has opened for me. And my walk with him. Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, I heard that last night. Discern the door. Discern the door. See if it be yours or not. Hallelujah. If you follow people through doors that are not meant for you, they could thrive while you die. They could survive. Come on, talk to me. While you crash and burn. Because that wasn't your door. So let the Holy Spirit cause you to discern the door. Know the time and season you're in. And if it ain't your door, don't go through it. Disaster awaits for those who run through the wrong doors. Are y'all listening to me? I'm not finished. I'm just quitting. Hallelujah. But doors are opening. Would you stand if you're not here, if you're at home, you're listening to us, wherever you are, would you just touch and agree with us? Hallelujah. Would you agree with us with the Spirit today that God is creating for believers unprecedented opportunities to know Him better? 
Opportunities to fulfill purpose. Opportunities to fulfill destiny. God is revealing to us opportunities to be who we have been called to be. And Lord, I don't want to miss the door. I don't want to miss the opportunity. Hallelujah. But yet, Lord, I don't want to be so anxious because of where I've been full of anxiety and depression and fear that I just run to any door. That's not your desire for me, Lord. So I'm going to hold my peace until I hear you speak again. I'm going to shut my mouth until you say something. And I know that it's your voice. Hallelujah. I won't even allow others to press me and press on me and encourage me for something that's not mine. I will stand still until your will is clear. Hallelujah. Come on, touch your neighbor or just agree with me in the spirit. Say, I'm going to stand still until your will is clear. Stand still Woo. <laughs> until your will is clear. Ooh, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, shut my mind. I'm not going to move until you tell me to move. Hey, Shabbat so God, Naya. I'm going to obey, obey the voice of the Spirit, not the voice of men. Because men have returned from doors that should not have gone through with testimonies that I should not have done that. I did that too early. It was not the Lord that bid me come. It was other voices, strange voices that I did not discern. Strange voices that I did not discern. Ooh, Shabbat. The Lord wouldn't have me saying this today except somebody needs to hear it. Whether you're here in the house or you're on uh, uh, YouTube, on Facebook Live, wherever you are listening to us, the Lord would not have me say this unless somebody needs it. Watch the strange voices. Watch the strange voices. Though you see the threshold, watch the strange voices. Woo. Hallelujah. Uh, Father, we thank you for the opportunity of knowing you. We thank you for the opportunity of even having been shut in, shut in with you. Thank you for our wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that has called us to know how to optimize and capitalize on these times in which we've been experiencing. We confess today that though some of them have been trying, they have not been for naught. You have lifted us. You have kept us. You have encouraged us. You have transformed us. You've transfigured us. Hallelujah. You have grown us in the spirit. Our time with you has been absolutely prosperous. And we thank you today for the time we spent with you. Now, doors are reopening. Doors are opening again. Hallelujah. We see thresholds. Some, Lord, that are enticing. Some that seem to call our name. But we're not going to move until we hear from the Spirit. we got to know your voice, not follow a stranger. Hallelujah. So we pray you'll speak to us. Speak to us. We pray you'll speak to us like you've never spoken to us before. Speak to us. Speak to us, Jesus. Speak to us. Speak to us, Jesus. So that we can experience this place of transition, transaction, and transformation. Have an encounter to you that would change our lives forever. And we promise to give your name glory, honor, and praise. For it's in the precious name of Jesus, our Christ, we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, I want to offer you Christ. Wherever you are, where you're listening to us today, you need Jesus. You need Jesus in your life. This is not a good time to live your life void of being Christ-centered. This is time to live a Christ-centered life. It's time to live a biblio-centered or bibliocentric life. Hallelujah. Your life centered on the Word of God. 
It's time to live a pneumocentric life, a life that is controlled by the Holy Spirit. But if you don't know Jesus, you can't do that. So I want to offer you Jesus today as your Lord and your Savior. Wherever you are, home, driving in your car, in your kitchen, in your living room, in your dining room, wherever you are, if you don't know Jesus, I want you to offer him your life today. Just like you are without one plea, but that his blood was shed for you and that he bids you come to him, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe him in your heart, you are saved. You can do that now wherever you are. Whatever your plight has been, if you want Jesus to come in your heart, just pray this prayer with me. Lord, I'm a sinner. I was born in sin. I was shaped into iniquity. But today I confess I need you, Jesus. I need you in my life. So I confess my sin because I heard that you're faithful and just to forgive me. Forgive me, Lord of the sin I was born with and the sins that I have committed. The sin, the sin, S-I-N, that I was born into and the sins, S-I-N-S, that I have committed. Forgive me. Take away my sin nature and remove my sins far from me. In the name of Jesus promise to follow you the best I can as I align myself to a church men and women of God people of like faith I'll live my life for you in Jesus name if you prayed that prayer today you're saved from sin amen 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 find yourself a Bible believing church if you're listening to us online this is a good Bible-believing church right here. Come right here, Kingdom Worship Center, or become one of our E-members, our iCampus members, somebody who joins with us online every week. Every week, follow us. Go ahead and get in touch with us by one of the email addresses you'll see on your, your TV strings there. Get in touch with us, and somebody will get in touch with you knowing that you need Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May heaven smile upon you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. One more time, give the Lord a tremendous praise offering all over the building. What an awesome time in worship today. Did you enjoy yourself today? I did. I oh really my God. did. It Archbishop was really good. Archbishop was off the chain. <laughs> always great. On point, always. But today he was phenomenal. Talking about transition, transactional, and being transformational. Mm. We need that in today's time. What an awesome word. I tell you what, one of the things he said was talking about be who God made you to be. And in the midst of this pandemic, opportunities are still here for us. And I'm telling you, when God opens the door, the doors that have already been opened in heaven, they're going to be transformed and open on earth. On earth. And I'm ready for them. Amen. Be ready. Amen. Be ready when Amen. the door is open. And he also said to be careful and be discern have discernment oh, to, yeah. to know which door to walk through. So that was a phenomenal thing All to think doors about, that make are you open, reflect. Not for us. Not for us. Amen. We like you to take note during our times of giving that there are many ways that you can be a blessing to the ministry to help us to continue to serve our community. We have Cash App, we have Givelify, and you can also mail your tithes and offerings directly into the church at 6419 York Road, Baltimore, Maryland. I'd like to make a personal note that even during this time, how God has been keeping me, yes. even through just giving and being able to be a blessing to give, the word of God is right. If you sow, you shall reap. 
if he says that you can give, it'll be given back to you. Press down, shaken together, and good measure. Will men give unto your bosom? That's what he and said. And we have been able to be a blessing through our food giveaways, not yeah. just to our church members, but to the community. Communities. So please, we acknowledge you, admonish you to help us to give on today. Please take note that those options are also listed at the bottom of the screen. And we thank you in advance for your liberal giving. God Amen. bless you. Amen. We thank God for that awesome word today. We hope you enjoyed the word, oh, enjoyed God. being with us, and that you really received something from that powerful demonstrative word today. We ask that you share the word with someone, your loved ones, your neighbors, someone who needs to hear how God is still yet opening doors, even during this time of confusion yes. and transition. What a phenomenal word. I'm so excited. I'm just so excited, so excited. Can't wait to get out and share the word. Amen? That's right. Amen. 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 And even in that, we want you to come back next week and join us again. Please put a note in your calendar to be back with us yes. at 10 a.m. next Sunday so that you can hear what thus saith the Lord from the dynamic leaders that we have here Amen. at Kingdom Worship Center. On behalf of our Bishop Greg Dennis and our senior pastors, Tanya Dennis, we thank you again for being part of Kingdom Worship Center's fellowship today. Have a great week.